So my story starts July 3rd, 2014, when my parents received a phone call that changed our lives, really. Um, about an hour later, they were in a parking lot picking up our first foster placement. We had just started the process. We weren't approved yet, and we were terrified. Um, we were anxious, we were happy, we were excited, but we were really nervous. And now, fast forward to 2018, we're coming up to four years, and we have been able to be blessed with being able to work with um, incredible people that I consider my heroes. We've been able to love on more kids that I can count. But with that, we've also been given front row seats to the brokenness that comes along with the foster system. A lot of the kids that come through our doors, they all have their own story. And some kids, they don't know what love looks like, or they think love looks a lot like anger, or they were never able to be kids or because they were too busy raising themselves or raising their siblings. And so when I tell people my family fosters, their first reaction is often, oh, I could never foster. I would get way too attached. And that's a normal reaction, and it's one my family had in the beginning too. But with the problem with that, this has stopped so many people from fostering. And we, there's a shortage. There are 428,000 kids in the foster system in the US. That's a lot. That could fill Mercedes-Benz Stadium six different times. 14,000 kids of those are right here in Georgia alone. We have way too many kids in care and not enough families to help us. The problem with saying you could never foster, you would get too attached. Just the other day I stumbled on something uh, that said, um, I could never foster, I would get too attached. And the person responded, well then great, you'd be great at it, you know, come join. So we, um, We've exhausted our resources and these, fam these families are taking in kids and there aren't enough of them and they've been shoved into homes that just have a bed for them. And so with this, they get put on the back burner and this follows them into the education system. And these kids, their entire world is just taken out from under them and whether it's a toxic relationship or not, we have to realize that this is all they've ever known. And we expect them to go to school and to act like nothing happened, to focus on that lecture at hand or take that test. So I want to do a little exercise with you guys. Everybody close your eyes. Close your eyes. OK, I'm a lot less nervous now. <laughs> but uh, no, really, keep your eyes closed. I have it something. But um, so imagine that you've just lost a loved one. Think of someone really close to you. And you've just lost them. And it was so unexpected. And now. People will acknowledge your grief. They'll send their cards. They'll send their phone calls. Your boss will take, tell you to take a couple days off work to regain yourself. And imagine that grieving process that you're going through. All right, you can open your eyes, but if you feel the need, you can keep them closed if you want. But um, these kids are going through the same thing. But how do you grieve when it's you yourself you've lost? We're not, these kids have gone through trauma and we're not even acknowledging it. We're telling them to go to school the next day and to take that test and then we wonder why they're acting out in our schools. Their entire world is just taken out from a blink of an eye. And I know this is all they've ever known, but I mean, that's, it's just taken away. Just like that, their entire world flipped upside down. We need people to get too attached. A lot of these kids that come in, they have RAD, which stands for Reactive Attachment Disorder, and it's when an infant's need for a bond is neglected. And this can ultimately cause problems when they're trying to um, create relationships in the future. So we have, we had these two girls that we fostered, and one of them was about um, 10 months old when we got her, 10 or 11. And, um, one of the things was she was willing to go to like anybody who wanted to hold her, which at first sounds like great, but when you take that and you compare her to a healthy baby, a baby who knows a, a, the attachment, you realize that that's a problem because she didn't realize what that love felt like, what that attachment felt like. She couldn't tell, she couldn't tell if it was her mother holding her or not. And when you look at a normal baby or a healthy baby, they can. They, can, they know when it's their mother they're holding. They cry out for their mother or they cry out for their father. And she didn't have this. And another problem we ran into was she wouldn't cry when she woke up. 
which again sounds like amazing and that sounds like a great foster placement like oh she slept in but we later found out it was because she was being left in her crib for long periods of time and that she had trained herself at such a young age to not cry because it didn't matter because it didn't she didn't think anybody was going to come and get her anyway and I got to see my parents pour themselves into this little girl and after months and months and months of teaching her what real love looks like and what real attachment looked like, she was crying when she woke up and you heard it too, she made it well known. But um, seeing that, she, I was talking to my small group a couple weeks ago and um, I was telling them, you know, I will be speaking at this TEDx event and I'm gonna get up on stage and I'm gonna ask people to foster. And when I said it and we were talking, it just sounded ridiculous because what I was really gonna be asking you guys was to sign up for heartbreak. Fostering isn't easy and I'm not gonna sit up here and try to glorify it or try to paint a pretty picture because most of the time it is ugly and it is hard and the, the goodbyes never get easier. But um, we need people to get that attachment. We, so we had these girls and my parents raised her and we had them for about two and a half years and we got to see her take her first steps and say her first words and then she never stopped talking <laughs> at all and um, then they had to leave. The mother worked her case plan. She did an incredible job and um, they were gonna go home and that goodbye was hard. That goodbye was the hardest goodbye. And so when you foster, you are taking your heart and you're putting it out there, knowing it's gonna get broken, but doing it anyway. You see, the problem was saying that you could never foster because you would get too attached, is saying that you could never foster because you're afraid to grieve. So with that, I will leave you with one of my favorite quotes. I am not afraid to grieve. I'm afraid of what will happen to these kids if no one took the risk to love them. Thank you.